The recent article published by consultancy firm McKinsey on the topic of software development productivity is getting a lot of flack at the moment. It's provoked strong reaction from a lot of people. So now it's my turn. Uh, there are some things that I agree in in their article, but to be honest, not very many, and none of them are really at the heart of what it is that they're recommending here. On the whole, I agree with the experts on software development and engineering that this article is rubbish, completely misses the point and probably is probably dangerous. So let's take a look. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. The article's titled, Yes, You Can Measure Software Developer Productivity, and goes on to demonstrate no reason why that is one, a good idea, or two, that the measures that they recommend do what they say they do, or indeed irrelevant at all to the success or otherwise of software development as a business enabling activity. Let's begin with some principles. These days I profess to being a software engineer and when asked what's the difference between engineering and say craft, my usual soundbite response is measurement. So I'm not against measurement at all. But what we choose to measure and why matters a great deal and measuring software development in terms of individual developer productivity is a terrible idea. As regular viewers of this channel will know, I'm a supporter of the DORA metrics. In fact, I've even contributed to some of the DORA annual reports. The reason that I think that they matter is because they are different to pretty much all of the measures of software development that I know of, in that they predict successful outcomes based on a model of what works and what doesn't. No other measures that I am aware of do that. So other metrics may be a good idea or may not, but there's no evidence either way. DORA is backed by evidence. This is a very big di difference, the difference between astronomy and astrology. I think that apart from the use of the DORA metrics in this model, the rest is pretty much astrology. The DORA metrics measure two things the quality of the software that we produce based on the measures of stability and the efficiency with which our process produces software of that quality based on the measures of throughput. These are generic and if you score well in both, that makes a measurable difference to your chances of success. Whatever you're building and whatever you de deem to be mean success for your organisation. I guess that it shouldn't be a big surprise that if you can produce better software faster, then you'll do better than people who produce worse software slower, or indeed any of the other combinations, because there is no trade-off here. Uh, it's not that you could produce even better software if you went slower. Go slower and your software will be worse. That's one of the defensible findings from the data from Dora. So astrology is nowhere near as good as this. Early in the McKinsey report, they list these questions. What are the impediments to the engineers working at their best level? Well, this is covered by monitoring the production of software via the Dora metrics and trying out different things to see what works better. This is not fixed by using the metric as a tool. The metric doesn't tell you the answer. How much does culture and organisation affect their ability to produce their best work? Well, so is this. This is also done by experimenting and trying out to evaluate ideas alongside one another using some stable metrics like the Dora metrics. How do we know if we're using their software developers times on activities that are truly delivering value? Well, if we're optimizing for better software faster based on the Dora metrics, they work as a fitness function that allows us to experimentally navigate to eliminate waste from our work. How can we know that we have all of the engineering talent that we need? I'd argue that this is the wrong question to ask and it was mostly refuted in 1970 by Fred Brooks in the Mythical Man Month. Software development doesn't scale well by adding people and the evidence that we do have also says that success isn't based on having the right engineering talent, but rather is predicted by how the team organise their work and how much they trust each other. 
and you improve all of that, those things by experimenting and using the Dora metrics once again. But all this is only one way in which the, the article makes a big mistake in which questions to ask. The more important wrong question here is really the whole idea of developer productivity in the first place when, when applied to individuals. This is really one version of the perpetuation of the myth of the rockstar programmer. The assumption that what it takes to be successful at software development uh, is a team of geniuses. Except that isn't what it takes to be successful. Being smart in how we structure and organize our work is much more important than the level of individual genius or otherwise in the team. It's not that talent and skill are irrelevant, but even to the degree that they do matter, you don't measure it through individual productivity. I recently got a lovely message from someone who studied one of my training courses. His team's deployment pipeline found a catastrophic production problem before their software hit production, using some of the techniques that, I, that they had learned from my course. So, however indirectly, I made some contribution to that team's success. How do McKinsey's me metrics measure my productivity for that team? They don't, and they shouldn't try. It's much more complicated than that. This is just an extreme example. I'm sure that there were lots of other collaborations, learnings and expertise from the people much closer to the problem than me that collectively headed off this potentially catastrophic bug. There's a very good post from Dan North about our mutual friend Tim, who's the worst programmer that he knows and tells much the same story. The whole idea of measuring individual productivity is a mistake. The problem is not one of productivity, but rather one of team contribution. And that's not measured by dumb, mechanistic, tailorist measures of individual performance. To me, this whole report is built on sand and on a rather naive interpretation of what it takes to measure pretty much anything, really. Here's a quote from the report. This quote implicitly assumes that measuring sales and other business functions is easy and is usually done much better than measuring software production. Well, this is nonsense. And even at the level of this basic assumption, the report's clearly wrong. Let's just look at for a moment at what this really means for the apparently superiorly measured business critical functions such as sales. Most salespeople are measured on the monetary value of whatever they sell. This is because it's an easy thing to measure, not because it's a good thing to measure. It's often a very poor measure, in fact. I once worked for a software consultancy many years ago and the sales team were rather infamous. One member in particular used to promise ridiculously unrealistically low prices for software projects based on ludicrously short time frames for development that he invented or pressured other people to invent. He also promised to deliver whatever it was that the client asked for even when the client was asking for something stupid or impossible. This salesman won awards for being the top salesperson for a short while until it was noticed that not one of his projects was profitable. Everyone was late and each created very angry customers because he'd lied to them. So was the monetary value of his sales really a useful measure? Was this person really productive? Of course not. This isn't a one-off. In the very good post by Kent Beck and uh, Gurgley Ortsoff, there's, they tell a very similar story. Anyone who's ever worked close to salespeople will have similar stories to tell. That doesn't mean that all salespeople are bad, but rather that measuring them only on money is a stupid metric and is far too simple for the bad ones to cheat. Rather like measuring developers on lines of code or test coverage, I suppose. So the idea that we can easily measure productivity in sales is as na naive and dumb as the idea that we can easily measure productivity in development. It's only that the dollar value of the sales gives the illusion of being an effective measurement because it's easy to measure, not because it al alone is an accurate or effective measure of business success. The McKinsey report recommends three levels of measurement at system level, team level, and individual level. It summarizes the measures in this diagram. 
I've already said I disagree with the usefulness of measuring individual productivity, and I don't like how the metrics are artificially aligned with their three levels either. This seems like an, a completely artificial grouping to me. The measures in this table come from three sources, the DORA metrics, space metrics, and then there's a group of metrics made up by the McKinsey people, I believe. I'd score these like this. The DORA metrics, sure, they're generic and evidence-based. Customer satisfaction, yes, but this isn't a measurement. This is at best a category of measurement. Whether or not I enjoyed my cake shopping experience is rather different to did my flight control system respond in a small enough number of milliseconds to allow the passengers on the plane to survive. In both cases, the customer may be, may be happy or maybe their relatives sad, but there isn't one measurement that tells us the answer to both of these things. Reliability is sometimes vital, but not always. And once again, how do you measure it? It's contextual. Code review velocity doesn't matter. What is much more important is the DORA lead time, which code review velocity may or may not be a part of. It is if the review is done post-commit, for example, and is rather irrelevant if it's done through pairing and mob programming pre-commit. Developer satisfaction is an interesting, though subjective, measure of software quality but has nothing to do with developer productivity, and neither does retention, through, though both are interesting for other reasons. This article describes how dumb it is to measure things like lines of code, and then goes on to recommend measuring velocity, story points, completed, and interruptions. This seems to me a serious misreading of the space metrics. I'm not Sure yet, what I make of the space metrics, I need to think a little bit more deeply about that. But one thing seems clear to me, they seem to be intended to be measuring team productivity, not individual productivity. McKinsey have added a few of their own measures to this list, suggesting that time spent on inner versus outer loop activities is a useful measure. So if I spend my time optimizing my deployment pipeline, I'm doing less productive work, so I'm not a productive member of the team. What utter nonsense. We should measure developers based on velocity index benchmark, whatever that means, contribution analysis and talent capability scores based on how many times developers access JIRA or industry standard measures of dev capability. This McKinsey report is, is harmful drivel, in my opinion, and I think you are either trained developers and dev teams to game the system to get good scores, encourage them down the path towards learned helplessness because they'll be too busy trying to game the scores, discourage work on things like pipeline optimization that can genuinely increase productivity, or encourage them to leave um, to work at somewhere that is a lot better at software development than is implied by this, the, the findings in this report. Thank you very much for watching.